Folks, the data industry is quickly devolving into two groups of people. On one hand, you have the people that can relate to other people. They can communicate, they can speak personally, they can communicate the results of analytics, that sort of thing. So they excel at storytelling, they excel at visualization, business intelligence professionals. You gotta be able to talk to people. The other group is the introverts. They are the kind of head down coders. They're the people that relate better to things. Folks, I would challenge you. The objective is to relate to people better than you relate to things. And I'll tell you why. It's been my experience that in this internet, entertainment media, electronic dominated world, the default position is to be an introvert. I hear people announce that they're introverts like it's some sort of badge of honor. Folks, full disclosure, I am also an introvert. It is not a badge of honor. It is not a credit to you. You're making a statement about how you're wired as if you can't overcome it. I'm an introvert, therefore I can't get up on stage. I'm an introvert, therefore I can't turn my camera on during a class or presentation. I don't know if you remember the Geico commercial from a year or two ago where the lady is sitting in a diner with the gecko and she's seeing all these mundane things about herself. She's very internally focused, as introverts tend to be. And she's seeing all these insipid things as if they're earth shattering, as if she's saying like, I'm, I just found out I'm the princess of Monaco. And she says, I just found out I'm an introvert. And the gecko kind of looks at her and is like, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty common. Like, not, not really that special. That's how I feel when people tell me they're an introvert. My usual response is, yeah, me too. And I fight every day to overcome that. Why? Because it's important. Folks, as we see generations raised more and more by electronic media, they're, they're plunked in front of a TV, in front of child appropriate programming. They're, they have the internet from a young age. They're sitting there with their iPads, playing these little flash games, mind numbing. As we see generations growing up with that being a primary influence for them, introversion is becoming the default position. And that to me, as I think about it, is people that relate better to things than they do to people. And that was definitely me for a large portion of my life. I related better to books as my first love, animals, pets, television, movies, video games much better than I related to people. And as we evolve into this AI age, it's going to become more and more common. You already see so many professions that used to be done by people being taken over by AI. And what is the, the evolution? What is the, you know, these great cost saving and, and wealth promoting and access granting measures, they're all replace people with AI. We see our customer service replaced with chatbots. People are turning to internet algorithms to, hey, my workout's still going. They're turning to internet, algorithm, internet algorithms to uh, figure out what's wrong with them medically. We're even replacing actual doctors and nurses with artificial intelligence, with websites. And this is hailed as some great development. And in some cases, maybe it is. But all of it to me represents the evolution of people are relating better to things than they are to people. People are more comfortable talking to a chatbot than they are to, in many cases, their own spouse, their own family, their kids. People want some sort of web-based program to, to teach rather than a human teacher. I see a lot of danger in this. It's a topic that deserves more scrutiny. I feel, than I see it getting. But in the data profession, we're seeing a lot of layoffs recently. And I've seen them at companies that I've been involved with. And the common thread that I notice is that the people that are disposable are the people that relate to things. The people that are essential are the people that relate to people. So whether you are customer facing 
and willingly customer facing. You're the one that's actually out there engaging with customers, not just designing products for customers. If you are customer facing, you are a rainmaker. If you are internally focused, if you manage up well to your boss, you communicate well, you serve the things that they ask you for, you relate better to people. If you are a head down coder, and I see this every day, if your resume has nothing oriented to people, if it is entirely skill stack and search engine optimized, you are relating to things. You're relating to an applicant tracking system, to an algorithm, to some sort of portal. But the people that are essential and the people that cannot be easily replaced by an automated system are the people that relate to people. If you are a person that is now coming out of school or you're a young data professional and your specialty is code, I'm not going to say be afraid, but you should be watching the developments with AI with apprehension, let's say, because you are the most easily automated away. Look at all of these code assistants. They are this close to being, being able to do 90% of your job. So the takeaway here is not be terrified and, and sit and wait to be laid off. The takeaway is let's all make an effort this year. 2024 is the year that we start to realize our special place in the world. And that we realize that our place here is to relate to other humans, not to relate to things. And I think if you orient yourself that way, if you... Join a Toastmasters as I have. If you start working on your interpersonal skills with your boss, with your coworkers, with your clients, with people that you see every day, go out and strike up a conversation with someone today. Learn to relate better to people. And I think that's going to make a massive difference just in your life, your well being, your mental health, and also in your profession. So that's my guidance to you today.